The vaccine mandate went into effect for health care workers in California today and it appears to have compelled tens of thousands of unvaccinated employees to get shots in recent weeks. According to The New York Times, a survey of more than a dozen of the state's major hospital systems shows that vaccination rates this week of 90 percent or higher, but that leaves as much as 10 percent who are refusing to get the vaccine. So the question is why? Why are so many medical professionals on the front lines of the virus reluctant to actually get vaccinated? Dr. Sanjay Gupta talked with one nurse about her hesitation and why she uh, has made that decision. He joins us now. It's fascinating. So the nurse you spoke to is in Wisconsin. Were you surprised what she told you? I was surprised, Anderson. I think, you know, part of the reason I was surprised was because I kind of feel like at this point with everything that I know about the, the vaccine that I can, if I have enough time with somebody, I can convince them. I can answer their questions. I can convince them. And especially when it comes to a healthcare worker, someone who lives in an environment where they're continuously surrounded by good information and good knowledge about this. But what I learned talking to her is that there's a lot going on here. So listen to part of the conversation. It shouldn't be a choice between a personal health care decision and, you know, the job that we love. You would lose your job over this. Obviously, it's heartbreaking. It's, it's almost like a grieving process, to tell you the truth. Andrea Babinski is among the tens of millions of Americans who are eligible to get vaccinated against COVID-19, but haven't. And what's more, she's been a nurse at Gunderson Health System in La Crosse, Wisconsin, for more than 12 years. Ever since this mandate came down, many, many more people are quitting and leaving healthcare in our specific hospital. And we're not just talking nursing department, we're talking the EAs, which is the housekeeping department, we're talking dietary, laundry, respiratory therapy department. At Gunderson, about 85% of the staff have been vaccinated, but a small group has instead staged protests at the hospital, including Andrea herself. One of her specific health concerns, blood clots. If you were my patient, let's say we were having this conversation in a patient room instead, I would tell you, look, I, I, I hear your concern about clotting, but if you have a clotting disorder, you should get the vaccine because you'd be at increased risk of clotting if you got the disease. You know that very well with this pandemic, this vaccine, this virus, um, the science is constantly changing. And I understand that science is changing as we find out more things. But I think with the vaccines, I think when you have close to six billion shots that have now been administered around the world, and you have data, you know, trial data from last year that shows the safety and the effectiveness of these vaccines, and then real world data over the last nine months, it really does make a strong case. I'm not anti-vaccine, I'm not anti-COVID vaccine, but at the end of the day, informed consent is what we all honor in nursing. I stood up for a lot of my patients over the years that were feeling pushed into something and you know, it's it's their body. It's 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 a choice that they should make for themselves, and that I should make for myself. And certainly, as a doctor, and I, I'm very familiar with informed consent. But don't you, again, with all your knowledge as a nurse, don't you draw a line when it comes to a contagious disease? I mean, the idea that you're working in a hospital where there are sick people and vulnerable people, and you could potentially be a carrier of a virus and not know it because you might not have any symptoms. I've had multiple coworkers test positive for COVID in the last few weeks that are fully vaccinated. And so I think a much safer option would be, you know, regular testing for all of us vaccinated and unvaccinated alike. I'm not saying that this, this obviates testing or, uh, you know, wearing PPE and all those things. I don't think you would say, hey, I'm never going to wear a seatbelt unless, unless I also have an airbag. You know, of course you'd wear a seatbelt. You know, it just, I've never gotten a car accident, therefore I don't need to wear a seatbelt. Uh, I knew a guy who wore a seatbelt and still died, therefore we don't need seatbelts. They obviously don't work. It's scientifically grounded evidence that you as a nurse are more equipped than most of the country to understand and learn and preach, frankly, rather than, rather than sowing this doubt. It just, it, it worries me. It worries me about where we go now and it worries me about where we might go if there's another pandemic. I got to leave it with just saying, I think you should get vaccinated. And, and I don't know, will you think about it? Will I think about getting vaccinated? Yeah. Um, I, I feel like I've put a lot of thought into this already. As far as right now, I'm, I have no plans to get vaccinated, but I, I'm willing to keep the conversation open to with, with listen, still listening to others' point of view. Is there anything that would convince you to get vaccinated? Not at this point, but I, I mean, I guess never say never. 
It's fascinating. I mean, just factually speaking, first of all, I don't quite understand what her argument is to not get vaccinated. I mean, you mentioned the blood clot thing, but which doesn't make sense. But also just I mean, her, when you ask her, which is a very rational question of, well, you're around people who, you know, could be infected if you're positive and don't know it. She said, well, that's why I think regular testing is far safer. But it, as you said, you can be vaccinated and still get regular testing, <laughs> just as she said, people get vaccinated habit. But even if she got COVID, if she's vaccinated, she is less likely to transmit it to somebody else. And the COVID she has is less likely to harm and kill her. No question. She's less likely to get infected. She's less likely to to transmit it to someone else. And one doesn't necessarily preclude the other. I mean, you could you could do both. And, you know, I think she's a she's a rational person, you know, which I, the, the conversation was a long one, Anderson, so yeah, of 40 course. minutes long. Um, and it's worth pointing out that the vast majority of healthcare workers at her hospital and most hospitals around the country are vaccinated. I mean, some 90, in some places, 99%. So this is a small group of people that we're talking about here. But what was so interesting is that ultimately, after really dancing around this for some time, I really thought I was gonna be able to convince her. I felt like, how could I not be mm -hmm. able to convince this person? It really came down to the mandate for her. The idea that she, it, was, it felt too authoritarian, that, that she was yeah. being told what to do, that I think was what really was bothering her about Th this. That's my sense of what came out of it. Is like, cause she kept coming back to the idea of a mandate and, and being forced to do it and seemed to object to that rather than the vaccine itself. Anyway, yeah. Sanjay, I appreciate it. Thank you, really okay. fascinating and important you. what you're doing.